Hello, Baker Organization Management students. Hope everyone had a good weekend. I um, got to drive all the way out to Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, on Friday. I left about noon, got there like at uh, midnight, and then um, Saturday pretty much drove all the way back. My father-in-law, who uh, worked in the U.S. steel industry and went to Yale, and his daughter that went to Yale, uh, was there too. So it was uh, he was moving to North Carolina, so I picked up some stuff. More stuff. That's exactly what I need. But um, it was beneficial. I was happy that it was going to give me some things. But uh, it also tied into some of uh, the chapter readings this week as I was kind of reflecting on the mini lecture, driving out and back with chapters four, five, six, and seven out of Barney and Hasterly. But uh, I'll talk about that in just a second. But but for uh, the past week, uh, I just really enjoy the forum discussions. You guys are doing a great job. So just continue to do what you're doing. And uh, I've, I have been able to. Uh, at least respond, jump into everyone. So I'm, I'm hopeful that I can do that through the remainder of the course. Um, coming up in week five, um, we're going to definitely uh, look at, uh, again, kind of a, a rinse and repeat. So uh, jump into the forum discussion early, do your application assignment, and then also complete the personal uh, inventory assessments in my lab. So uh, get those done. I hope to have everything for week four graded by Tuesday and I'll get that posted. So, but looking ahead, some of the weeks to come, uh, week six especially, you have one of your major assignments. So start looking at that. I want to say for me, the emphasis is more on the written piece. Uh, don't spend a lot of time on the PowerPoint. Think about the PowerPoint, keeping it brief. Brevity is good. You know, just highlight a few bullet points that summarizes what you talked about in your writing. So that's that's all I'm really looking for. I was able to talk to Baker at the beginning of the course and eliminate it as a task stream assignment, which helped you all out. Um, but still, you know, you need to have it there for some of the data. So uh, anyway, for um, as I was driving out this week to uh, Pennsylvania and, and kind of doing uh, re reflecting on the readings again, you know, this week we talked about uh, cost leadership, product differentiation, flexibility of real options, and collusion. And chapter six and seven are going to be some technical reading too. Don't fret so much that you don't understand all the math behind it. You know, at the very minimum, uh, as a business manager, you can usually hire some pretty smart people that can do all the grunt work, and then you can ask the questions. You know, what does this mean? You know, so. But um, as I was uh, looking at those chapters and thinking about them this week, you know, first with uh, cost leadership. We like to use the terminology economies of scale, that is how do firms find ways to lower their average total cost. And usually that's done by getting larger in expansion. But there could also be diseconomies of scale when you get too big. You know, imagine that Budweiser distributed all their beer from St. Louis, Missouri. It just wouldn't make sense. So they put a lot of thought and reasoning about having dis different distribution centers throughout the country to get that beer distributed to the uh, supermarket, to the bars, and et cetera. And in fact, if you're interested, uh, business students, there was some really interesting uh, uh, kind of a history channel I did some uh, last week, if they're still out there, about the history of like booze, sex, and something else. But it, it talked about even Anheuser-Busch, how he recognized that if he could bottle his beer and have refrigerated uh, railroad cars, he could get it to everyone. So that, that's one of the genius about what he did. Uh, he kind of made a standard in the market, but uh, also you know, had to convince his father you know, to invest in this technology. Because what happened in that time period, a lot of the saloons would just water down the beer, but he was trying to maintain the same quality. He said, I can do that by bottling all the beer. So that's why we have bottled beer today. And it's also, you know, the darker uh, glass to, uh, to keep the sunlight out to help keep the beer uh, better tasting. So, but uh, with that, you're going to look at, you know, uh, how does management control uh, the different systems of cost, you know, the supervision. And it could also lead you know, in even compensation policies to try to incentivize people uh, to keep costs down. So, you know, there's pricing and there's cost. You know, price you can't always necessarily do anything about, but cost you can't adjust. Uh, I remember Jamie Diamond at Citibank, uh, he kind of really uh, emphasized that one time. Like in the market, he's in banking, but you know, like the only thing you can really control is your cost to a degree. So, chapter five, you're going to look at product differentiation. 
Um, you know, some of the things that I thought about too, it was interesting to me is like, I see these electric bikes now. We've gotten to the point that you don't even have to pedal, you just let the bike do all the, the work, I guess. But uh, they're quite expensive, but I guess they're getting popularity too. But you know, it's just a good example again, how much uh, products change and how, to, how firms try to make themselves unique or at least appear unique. And that's why a lot of firms that, especially monopolistic competitive firms, they spend a lot of money on advertising. Like I always like the examples of the uh, fast food. I probably ate way too much of that my way out to uh, Pennsylvania and back. It's just convenient. But to me, it's just a hamburger, french fries, and a soft drink, you know. But they all cook the bigger burger slightly different ways to try to make it unique, and they spend a lot of money on advertising to try to convince you that our better ta butter, uh, burger, excuse me, tastes better than somebody else's or the French fries or whatever the soft drink is. And then, um, you know, finally with uh, with with that, you know, reputation as a, a big pull too. You know, whether you're a firm that is uh, perceived as a high quality product or a low quality product, and there are people that like low quality products actually we call those inferior goods but sometimes if your income is not as great uh, you may actually take an inferior good and then uh, chapter six still with the options of flexibility um, I love the example they talk about Netflix it's interesting because by the time this book was written to where Netflix is today Netflix is kind of going back to a retrenchment a little bit mode uh, based on competition and that's again why I love this course there's so many real world examples and the reality is that you can't maintain that market leadership forever, uh, you have to do things differently, you have to rethink about what you're doing, and I think Netflix just laid off 300 employees, which is an option of flexibility. Um, so, you know, how are they going to make sure they maintain some relevancy into the future? They're going to have to continue work on quality program and what people need or want. Uh, but you're going to look at certain things like this you've probably seen in the finance core before, net present value analysis, you know, project analysis, which investment should we take on? And putting some money and energy into doing some research before you go full force out and do a full project. Because managers, they, they want to know uh, kind of the sensitivity and scenario analysis, I should say, you know, the key leaders. Um, I'll give you the example like the movie. I uh, went to the movies last week with family, saw Top Gun. Tom Cruise is making too much money. But when they pitched the idea of Top Gun, they knew it was going to cost a a significant amount of money to produce that movie, but they also anticipated what they thought the cash flows from that movie would be, and they felt they were, they were going to make a normal profit at least. Well, they're making economic profits. <laughs> it's still, the movie is doing quite well because they were able to piece a little bit of nostalgia on for people that are my age that I saw it when I was a senior in high school graduating to almost you know 35 years plus later, I think 36 maybe. It was 86, um, you know, but they were able to capture for both generations, you know, kind of a re the idea of the storyline is very similar, uh, but it's, it's very popular. And it's very well done. So I encourage you to see Top Gun if you get a chance sometime this summer. But anyway, you know, with that, you're going to look at some uh, Black Scholes models, some other models in there. And again, these, these, this is going to be technical reading, but the main idea is that, hey, I want to pay and I want to understand because, again, cash flows are never guaranteed. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen. It, there, there's movies like Ishtar, they spent a ton of money on it. It was a total flop. But um, nothing is ever guaranteed. So leaders want to know the what ifs. Uh, sensitivity, I change one thing at a time. What does this do to the net present value? Scenario might be all these variables going on at a time. But again, I want to get as much information as possible. And what's the probability that this project or this investment may actually pan out in the future? Again, nothing's guaranteed. But at least having some of that information may be well worth it. And even doing the test run, you know, where our testing on the market, they do that with movies. They'll actually show it uh, to individuals, and they'll do different storylines at the end, and they'll change things just to see how the audience react, whether they liked it or not. So, you know, they're, they're fine-tuning that movie that you see all the time before it's released to the actual public. And then, uh, you know, finally, Chapter 7, you're going to look at, at collusion. Um, I want you to say that I want you to know this. You know, explicit collusion in the United States is highly illegal. So do not engage in this as students. Uh, they'll be agreeing on a golf course to try to fix prices. They give case study examples. The airline industries have done this. And so you, know, if you're looking for something fun to read on a Friday or Saturday night, go to the Justice Department and look at all the different cases. It does happen, but the government will go after you if you are found. Uh, to be engaging in any explicit collusion with another business partner. But there is a lot of what we call tacit or impl uh, implicit collusion that happens all the time. You think about when you go to the grocery store, 
There's a gallon of milk, right? These are all standard size and shapes and the way that they come through. You don't see anybody selling milk in a different type of gallon. Uh, it's all the same bottle that you see. So there's kind of these unwritten rules or sometimes that there may be firms, and they give the example of the textbook about a, a you know, really gas station doing really well, a convenience store. And then another one moves it across the street. You kind of see that with uh, Walgreens and a CVS. And you actually see car dealers that actually benefit to be in the same area with each other. Uh, they'll actually improve their revenues and outcomes as opposed to be in isolated areas through the town. But these are implicit decisions. And uh, you know, what are the strategies involved in these decisions? So, all right, and, and kind of wrap up for the week, uh, going a little bit longer, but just kind of share some of my experiences. Uh, I was getting pretty tired on the way back. So I was kind of looking at hotels, and I did not realize how high the demand for hotels were at the time. I looked at Priceline, and the prices were outrageous at some of these hotels. So I stopped at one town in Vandalia, um, Illinois. And uh, one thing I've also learned, the people that work late at night, they're, they're some interesting characters. I tell you that with the, the work at the front desk. Um, but uh, anyway... You know, he said, hey, there's nothing available in town. I got one room. It's smoking. I go, I can't do the smoking. So I drove a little bit farther. And I just wanted to be safe and stay somewhere for a little bit and some rest before I came home. And then I found like a Motel 6 in uh, Kingdom City, Missouri. But anyway, there were other cho choices, the holiday. And my wife was with me. She'd be, be like, no way are we staying at a Motel 6. Uh, she's a Marriott girl. So, uh, but, you know, I'm, I was alone. I'm by myself. I just want to get a shower, somewhere to rest for a while, some safe driving. But you know, there's a lot of different choices. There's product differentiation, but you know, each hotel serves a different type of customer, and uh, they have to think about their costs. You know, what they're having. You know, do you have a pool or not have a pool? Uh, Motel Six. Yeah, I think if I remember that slogan right, you know, we'll leave the light on for you. You know, so but it's a it's a catchy phrase. They, Missouri you have giant billboards. They're kind of exploding at you all over the place. Other states don't allow that. They, they want to kind of like allow the scenery and the beauty, but not Missouri. We'll, we'll post big billboards with loudness all over the place. Um, we would call that a negative externality in economics. But, uh, you know, flexibility, real options, you know, does a hotel expand or does it remodel? Probably most hotels is a question of remodel. I'll tell you that Motel 6 has not been remodeled in a long time. And last is, you know, uh, with collusion, uh, tacit collusion, you know, these hotels, they do talk to each other and they look at vacancy rates. So now they have algorithms within the systems that tell them what the demand is and prices immediately adjust, you know, so... I ended up sp spending like $70 to stay at the Motel 6. It was well worth it to me. So I'm safe, rested to do the mini lecture this morning. But it, I, I kept thinking all the way. It's like, wow, there's so many examples just on this trip about the chapters you'll be reading this week. So again, if you do have any questions, do email me. But I hope you have a great week. And I look forward to talking to you online. Take care.